And thanks for joining us at 4.30. The news continues now with Live at 5. Thank you, Courtney. Coming up next at 5, stunning new information about the shooting at the spa. What we've learned about what happened that fateful day next on Live at 5. From today's TMJ4. This is breaking news now on your side. And then breaking news, the chilling calls for help during the shooting spree at the spa. Brookfield police released the documents from their investigation. That report is 600 pages long. Ratcliffe Houghton opened fire inside the Azana Spa. He killed his estranged wife, Zena, and Maylin Lind and Carrie Roebuck. Four other women were wounded. Cody Holyoke's been pouring through the files. He is live in the newsroom. Cody? Mike Carroll, today Brookfield police gave us 11 discs packed with new information, video, and chilling details surrounding the shooting and the man behind the chaos. City of Brookfield Police, man with a gun call, Adana Hair Salon. It's the call that sent police scrambling to the scene, minutes after Ratcliffe Houghton killed his wife and two other women in cold blood. Terror filled the building as customers and workers heard gunshots. Zena Houghton's daughter is one of the many witnesses to call police. I was in Adana, Radcliffe Houghton. My stepfather came in, he tried to take my mom. He told everyone to get on the ground. Do you know if anybody was hurt? Yes, he shot me, Lynn. He shot her, and I heard him shoot a lot of people. Can you verify if there's any more victims right outside the building? Officers sped to the scene, tending to victims and trying to find the gunman. Second floor, he's wearing camouflage. He's facing back and forth between the windows. Eventually, they send in a canine unit to find Houghton dead upstairs, walking past an area where it appears he started a fire. In the man's pocket, a copy of the restraining order his wife filed against him, and a handwritten note, which reads in part, the law failed, Tammy knew, but yet failed. The whole county should be sued for failure. If they had made us talk, this all could have been avoided. Really brings a tear to your eye just listening to those calls. By the way, Tammy is Azana's owner. Just a week before the shooting, Radcliffe Hodden had slashed his wife's tire, so police knew who they were after just minutes after that 911 call started coming in. Tonight, we're also learning Houghton was vocal about his plans, even hinted about killing his wife the days before the shooting. We are still going page by page, file by file through this report. We will have much more tonight on Live at 6. On your sign, live in the newsroom, Cody Holyoke, today's TMJ4. Yeah, we knew this was going to be bad, but those 911 calls are just chilling. Thank you, Cody. Zena Houghton's brother just finished a news conference about the report. Steve Shamraz is with us live. He has that part of our breaking news coverage. Steve. Carol, we heard from Elvin Daniel. Again, he uh, lost his sister Zena in all of this. And uh, Elvin's been pretty vocal about the need to close the loopholes for certain types of gun sales. He also wants to see better tracking of people under domestic violence restraining orders. Today, though, he took the high road and he wanted to take attention away from any problems that may have come up in the past couple of days of Brookfield police and how they release these reports. He says he wants to keep the focus on the victims and the need for change. I would like to put the events of the last few days behind us. The Brookfield Police Department followed the law in order to be transparent to the public, and I support that. They were very kind and very accommodating to me and my family right after the shooting incident. And I want to thank them for that. Obviously tough for Elvin Daniel to make it through parts of the news conference today coming up on live at six. We'll hear from his uh, we'll hear his response to some of the facts in these documents that show his sister Zena was a hero on that day, deflecting Radcliffe Houghton's attention, allowing people to have time to get out of the building. She essentially sacrificed her own life so others could survive. On your side, live in downtown Milwaukee today, Steve Shamraz, today's TMJ4. And her brother really wants to use this as a way to remember Zena and also spread awareness about domestic abuse and prevent it from happening again. He is determined to do whatever he can, change whatever laws he can, uh, convince uh, judges to be tougher on domestic abusers to make sure this does not happen again, Carol. Okay, Steve Shamras joining us live. Thank you very much. And we 